This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. kids doing up here in the attic? Comet it went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, net. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, we used to use the old TV set. No satellite hookups or anything. Just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some are even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that enforced colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Well, uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. We're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And this week, we're continuing from last week on the big Hanna-Barbera shows. But before we jump right in there, we just want to uh, tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 here on AZTV Cable 21. <laughs> also, um, I want to tell you in case you want to write into Vast Wasteland for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but uh, uh, if you do, for some strange reason, our address is Vast Wasteland, Box 1515-26, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And now, let's go right on and continue. Uh, I think when we left off, we were just about to delve into the Flintstones, so... Uh, the ooh. tragedy of the, the Flintstones. Yeah, the, 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 the uh, rise and fall of the Flintstones, as it were. So let's go right into that, shall we? Wilbert, what's going on? Well, by golly, back when the Flintstones started back there in the 60s, when they were on late-night TV and they first started off, it was just... It was really a, um, an innovation to have a primetime cartoon about a family... Um, well, a couple of families, I guess, really. It's the Flintstones and the Rubbles, who lived next door to each other, and it was um, pretty much the um, the honeymooners. That was a cartoon, basically. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Where Fred and Barney, well, Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble were always going out and, oh, I don't know, Screwing trying to up find something. ways to get off work and yeah. go to... <laughs> get out of the opera and go, go bowling. Scheme out and scheme out of pretty, pretty doing what they were the... supposed to do to do something they wanted to do, and it would... 
backfire pretty, somehow. And pretty, pretty much your uh, Honeymooners episode. <laughs> exactly. For all intents and purposes, because it was pretty much the same show. Except they didn't work at the bus station in the, the sewer. It was the quarry. The quarry. And then who knows what Barney, Barney did. Yeah, I was going to say, what did Barney do? He did have a boss, but he, he didn't work where job, Fred worked. We, we don't know what Barney did. Barney worked for the CIA, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We just don't know. It's uh, I, if uh, if you have any ideas to um, what Barney did, what Barney did for a living. For a while, we know he worked at uh, he worked with uh, Fred for a oh, while. We were given Ray that Fred impression. But, but, um, company, right. We don't know what the deal is on that. Anyways, don't know this, what Barney did. This show was on from '60 to '66 in in what was then prime time. Um, we're talking uh, 8:30 to 9. 7 to 8.30, 7.30 to 8, throughout all that time. That was, and that wasn't like little bits. That was pretty well continuous. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly just uh, a lot of episodes there. We went through at least um, three different openings on the show. Where yes. We had, um, well, just Fred and Barney going to pick up, um, well, not Fred and Barney, Fred and Wilma going to pick up Wilma and Betty so they could go to the drive-in, right, yeah. you know, and they, they'd come home, they'd... And that, let was the, the dog and that was the early one. The we, cat out. Well, this, that was the early one we say, when when the cat was in the car, <laughs> mm -hmm. when the saber toothed cat they had, which you really that was the unknown, the really the neglected pet of the Flintstones. Yeah, uh, they, baby puss. That ba was its name. Baby puss. Okay, mm -hmm. well that's fine. And uh, it had a name. And uh, and Dino was just the uh, obviously the star pet. Okay, going to the con fact that they didn't really have a good continu Continuity. Uh, yeah. continuity. Continuity. There's the word. Same damn thing. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, when the first episode where they found Dino, yes. Dino talked. Yeah. And it's like they domesticated him and Bam. Lost that voice. Well, they went to that, you know, <laughs> Never spoke again. Maybe then it was like uh, you know, like in the Stone Age it was like getting your dog neutered or it would be getting your dinosaur just getting your snorkosaurus <laughs> yeah, having his uh -huh. Oh, that's sad, that's sad. Uh, well well. He went from having a nice um sarcastic voice to <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds much like the Chihuahua next door to me. Yeah. He will die if it doesn't stop. <laughs> so what what would happen was they uh, they got through the original six years uh, with uh, although there were continuity problems, but uh, really it was pretty much the same show from beginning to end. Hey, and, and you, um, you've got to you've got to mention in there that um, when when Pebbles the whole the whole thing of Wilma being pregnant and yes. then. They had pebbles. It was. It's. It's. I think that's comparable, really, to um, little Ricky being born. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and I love Lucy. But too. on the honeymooners, um, the honeymooners wound up adopting a child, right. and which the rubbles, rubbles wound up adopting did. a child. Yeah, well, exactly. they they left. Somebody came along and just left Bam Bam on their doorstep. And, <laughs> but they adopted him. They went through the whole thing. You could do the house. <laughs> I know I would. But. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so they were fed the first six years, and uh, and then um, they said, you know, people, you know, people are getting bored with that, and so it's like, okay, we we need more. So that was when this is pretty much the the beginning of the of the fall of the Flintstones. Uh, first, it's like Coke and classic Coke. Exactly. It's like classic Flintstones and. Pebbles and Bam Bam as, as the teenagers. Pebbles and Bam Bam Here show. Here we go. Pebble <laughs> <laughs> Dabba yeah. Dizzy. Dizzy. <laughs> Which had uh, some. But what okay. what always made made no sense to me was the fact that Fred and Wilma and and Barney and Wil and uh, Betty when you saw them never aged. Well, hey, now when <laughs> you're right. when That's you're a true. kid though. <laughs> And you grew up. Does it does it really look to you like your parents of yeah. age? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but the audience yeah. the audience saw the saw the Flintstones. Obviously, were about what 15, 16, maybe seventeen years older, and yet they. <laughs> I didn't understand that. They never well, grew it's, older. It's the uh, the temporal stagnancy. Oh. That, uh, you reach <laughs> a certain age, and from there on, you just don't do anything until you hit the big decline, and then it's suddenly evident that exactly. you've definitely aged. So. Uh, and then. Well, they did have. Jay North was Bam Bam. Right. Sally Struthers was Pebbles. Yes. And then they had all these goofy people. And Dino was still around. How old were well, you? None of my dogs lasted oh, that long. it's a dog. It's a dinosaur. That's a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah but geez, dinosaurs okay. must have longer life Well, the, the, uh, the Hopperoo sure years. didn't last. Well, that's true. You never saw a Hoppy The poor anymore, little Hoppy right? just croaked off hoppy after a couple of... But they of had a, what, a little... Uh, Woolly mammoth or something yeah. that ran around and well they used to have one that would be the dishwasher or well, those, something. Those, those didn't really <laughs> they liberated, but then they they did have. I think in the Pebbles and Bam Bam well, show they had one that was a pet, but I don't. Uh, I he's don't not know pictured that it had here. A name or anything, but oh well. I want to say Woolly. Yeah, I think. 
that might have been it. You know, they were real original. Dino the Dino, come on. <laughs> and then, uh, and then things got even worse when they started to bring other characters into it because they, because it was kind of like. I don't know, like Flintstones helper or something, you know, kind of like, <laughs> kind of like adding more stuff into there just to keep them going. They they show some old episodes, they show some new stuff, and and uh, by then it was like, what was that? The the the, the Flintstones comedy show? No, no, the one. What was that weird creature that was there? The Shmoo, wasn't the, the Shmoo, Shmoo in that? Yeah, the Shmoo. There's the Shmoo. Yeah, I mean, I it's a very small the, picture. The, well, didn't the Shmoo kind of come over from another show, like? The sh there was a shmoo. No, there was a shmoo. Not there was a shmoo sh 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 show. A shmoo show. A shmoo show. <laughs> hey, now rented lips. Look at that. And then, as if all this wasn't bad enough, now in the '80s, we, we I know we usually don't talk about the '80s. We just want to. This just goes the along. Final the final end. The final decline. The final blow in the. Uh, <laughs> the Flintstones the Flintstone kid. continuity. Yeah, they're they're all they're all Let's little children it. now, and they know each other despite the fact that it was t said earlier they didn't even meet each other until they were like in out college, of high school, college, yeah. Right. And they tried to impress so each other. Oh, the there we go. All of a sudden, oh no, no, they they were they knew each other when they were little kids. It's like what, like they woke up from a dream or yeah. something? Come on. Oh, dream. Yeah, ooh, the Dallas complex there. And hey, oh. back back when they were really the Flintstones, Gazoo, the great mighty Gazoo. Harvey from, Corman. From, from Mars, or yeah. well, from the future. From the future. He's from the future. He took them to a glimpse of the future, and they kind of met or ran into a civilization that was pretty much like the Jetsons. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, they never saw the Jetsons. We made another city even the yeah. Of the future time. But I never thought Gazoo ruined it. You know, Gazoo was fun. Mm hmm. And he was, he was another form of extender, but it but it worked. But it worked, yeah. It was still original. Because it was back original. in the original in the original thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it did work. Although the one thing that's always interested me is Barney's eyes have uh, have gone through several changes. They were like little beady things for a long time. Then they, then they got bigger. They were always just black. Then they get, they got some personality where they had pupils and whites. But then it's it's just funny. <laughs> We had a little cosmetic surgery. Contacts, the way. contacts. I went, to, went to Bedrock uh, <laughs> Hospital. And, the Bedrock uh, Opticians. <laughs> bedrock bedrock Opticians. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, so, well, you bring that up. Uh, let's uh, go on to certainly the other extreme. And uh, let's say, Hanna Barbera, please, no more baby shows. Right. We don't need any more babies. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think even the babies would agree. We don't need any more baby well, shows. Babies will still go on. I mean, I guess other people are other. Well, they're, they're just doing it with so many things. now. <laughs> well, it's everybody. Yeah. 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 So the other extreme, of course, the Jetsons. The Jetsons. And certainly that's the big thing right now, what with the big uh, Jetsons movie. Big Jetsons movie, Jetsons everything. It was and there's the uh, the big Jetsons movie coming up and coming and up it's out where have you out, been <laughs> out, whatever. George Jetson Jane his wife daughter Judy Jean, their boy Elroy and Astro <laughs> Astro oh, <Ray> <laughs> and um, certainly uh, this we talked about this last week and the fact that uh, there were only what uh, 24 original episodes of this uh, they in the mid 80s put together another package of shows which brought it up to something like 45, but considering the longevity of this series and the fact that it was virtually even, you know, it was only on TV for like a year in original running, but it's been on uh, Saturday morning cartoons pretty much until the mid-80s. Right. In some mm -hmm. form or another, kept pulling it back, and it's like there's only 24 episodes that exist. But they kept showing them and, and showing them. And was it Rosie them. Hazel? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From the old Hazel series. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and why did Jay need a maid when everything was automatic? Well, it just got <laughs> tires on the punch those buttons. Didn't yeah. you ever see well, that? Well, Rosie that couldn't even punch got, the buttons. Where they got Rosie, it's like Jane kept pushing those buttons and her finger ended yeah, up like an accordion this, or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, like the famous food racket cycle here. Food racket cycle. <laughs> I mean, you know. Why did she need a maid? <laughs> I still have my questions about that. To run that sweeper, to, right. uh, to walk those kids. Yeah, <laughs> walk know. the kids. And the dog walker, wasn't that neat? <laughs> well, between that and who, who is um, the handyman? Um, Henry. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mr. Jetson. I, and I Henry had that. a robot. He made his own robot. Mac. Well, Mac. <laughs> what you got? For <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Yeah, by golly. So, uh, certainly, uh, 
I mean, the Jetsons really couldn't complain about having enough people helping them. And hey, much, hey, you know? um, another thing in there, um, you've got uh, Spacely Sprockets and Cogswell Cogs. Cogs. Cogswell was definitely a, a descendant of uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Slate. Slate. Oh, yeah, yeah there's yeah. no question. There's no question, yeah. Is, yeah. That's just interesting. And of course, uh, done by the, uh, oh, where is it here? Oh, I don't see it on here. Who you got? Mel Blanc did do. He did. did, did he do did spacely. do spacely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the man who did. Bid Son, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I like the the way the okay a lot of the stuff they had on the first Jetsons, we pretty much have now. Now well, a lot of it. Yeah. We have a lot of that technology. Yeah. So I think, but making the new shows, they've not scaled down the um, mm -hmm. the computers. Right. Okay, what's the one's name? Rudy? Yeah. That plays cards? <laughs> Uniblab? <laughs> it's enormous Place your computer. Bets. Place your bets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they still had the enormous computers, but we had those then. Yeah. Our the computers were huge, computers. yeah. Well, to, to round out uh, the prime time stuff, of course, both Flintstones and Jetsons, uh, a rare thing, this was only on, I think, for one year. The Hanna Barbera Happy Hour. This was in 1978. Oh my goodness! Um, let's see if I can find out some information about this. This this didn't. This sounded like uh, pretty much uh, Hanna Barbera's attempt to copy Sid and Marty Croft. Uh, Hanna Barbera hash. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Tried their hands at a primetime variety hour with the short-lived series. The program is certainly unusual. Instead of a live host, had his MCs two life-size puppets. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Tony Randall, Dan Haggerty, Twiggy, and Leaf Garrett were on there. Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> where have they gone from there, huh? Hey. So this was certainly a springboard for a lot of people. Of course, Tony and, Randall did. Uh, he did make a an appearance, at least as a voice, in um, Gremlins 2, the new badge. Mm. But well, <laughs> he's done a lot of things. <laughs> Quite well, a few. So anyway, so. Um, of course, we wanted to go back and uh, really pick up some other ones that we kind of uh, skipped over. Uh, uh, one, of, one of my personal favorites, and this was part of the, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the hour that had uh, all of the various series in it back in the 60s, Hanna-Barbera stuff, other than, it wasn't, I don't think it was, um, 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 I'm just losing it at this point. What? <laughs> They were well, the, the big puppets, uh, the, the, the oh, going down the slides and the whole... Those weren't puppets, those were, were actually people, those yeah, were exactly. the banana splits. Banana splits. Ah, uh, golly, now that, was, that was a great show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, here's, here's uh, him. I was, an, this I was an actual member of the banana splits fan club. And I think this was I knew the banana splits code. I didn't right. know the words of the song, though. Uh, we got it there. Oh, one banana, two banana, three banana, four, four, well, four bananas other... make a bunch and so do many more. Over hills and highways. Well, of course, this is a go. picture after they changed banana. Snorky. Yeah. Snorky, yeah. like, started out as a as a mammoth, as a woolly yeah. mammoth, and then he got, a, like, shaved or something. Yeah, they gave him eyes and put a vest on him. It, it just totally this ruined was the sort Snorky. Of, uh, this was sort of little kids monkeys. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Little kids, exactly. little little kids monkeys. Because I mean, most of us little girls was chasing after Davy Jones yeah. anyway. But, but, one, but one of my favorites then was, it, it, I think it was running in that was Secret Squirrel and Morocco Mole. Well, they were actually, I guess, a little <laughs> one, bit before that. One twenty nine in there. One twenty nine in here. A really, a pretty good picture. This is the Hanna Barbera Bible here. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. There they are. <laughs> This was one of my this is one of my personal favorites of all the all the the pretty much generic animal uh, shows uh, of the late sixties for Hanna Barbera. This was probably one of the one of my favorites. Oh, it wasn't one. just secret. It was secret squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so we had that one. I pretty much enjoyed that. Uh, we uh, mentioned the Impossibles. Uh, yeah, Frankenstein Jr. Oh, and, and the Impossibles. I, I wanted I wanted to go um, a couple things that. Uh, one that certainly seemed to spawn a trend at Hanna Barbera, and this is on 176. This is Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch, and this, and this became. Th I think this was the first one that started the whole thing of, of, uh, of uh, humanizing cars, <laughs> which Hanna Barbera really seems to like and thinks this is a really great idea. Oops, over here. Over, oh, wrong one. You're getting the hair bear. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think that was one of the. A little picture up here. One of the. Uh, the things, because uh, they had other shows. I'm trying to remember some of the other ones. But I can remember um, a later one called the, 
Turbo Teen or something? Well, Turbo Teen. I don't know. Is that there we go. There's there? Wheelie. It's, well, that's the chopper um, watch. <laughs> oh, let me see. What, I just had it right there. Um, oh, um, no. We're losing our minds. <laughs> but but uh, there was a, there, believe me, there was just a ton of shows of Hanna-Barbera that they seemed to just try over and over. Oh, a human car is really going to be a great idea. <laughs> Not speed buggy, but it's some kind of yeah, speed, speed buggy. buggy. Speed buggy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So they were convinced that was going to work, and yeah. um, I mean, it, we it, weren't. <laughs> right, we weren't. That was that's what it came down to. Ba well, basically, um, I guess that's where Kit comes from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Well, let's see. Uh, we got another one. One eighty one. Uh, certainly, this was this was a departure for Hanna Barbera. I'm getting there. Wait till your father gets home. This Which? was this was really a different. Uh, this is a, really a different. I mean, the styling was obviously just radically different. And if I remember correctly, this was a lot like All in the Family. Um, somewhat. Yes. Yeah, um, I saw an interesting <clears throat> show about this one. Originally, they had planned to do it with Lions in the Jungle. And mm. they were running. They showed some of the original drawings. And they had put the voice into it. And first they played it with the um, lions saying, and then they faded in with the people saying it. And it would have worked, I think, but it probably wouldn't have gotten accepted. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was the same concept, just different family grouping. <laughs> I, I, I did remember that, and I thought that was a fairly good show. Yeah, they, well, they're, on, they're family grouping now, shows. You've got... Um, where I lived, we had that in the evenings. Yeah, it was on the It was an evening, evening show, like a 7 o'clock show. Mm -hmm, somewhere around there. But it was it was syndicated, though. It was yeah, not, yeah, it was a syndicated. I think it was also in the summer, if I'm not mistaken. We got it in the summer, yeah. Somewhere around there. Because, well, um, you've got that one. Wait till your father gets home. you got Where's Huddles? Huddles. Mm -hmm. It was on in the summer. Um, well, Huddles was one that they used... Where I lived, anyway, I lived down near Cincinnati at the time, and they would pop it in on Sunday afternoons, like after baseball games. Okay, well, that was your, just goes your basic football games. Thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you've got um, that one, you got the Roman holidays, which was uh, back in the past, but we were still talking a, a family situation thing yeah, there. Uh, um, those were the days. Those were the days, right, which was in like the, the Victorian 30s. Victorian area. Well, mm -hmm. No, it was Victorian. It was more, okay. Yeah, it was Victorian it was like right around like 1900. No, they got an old car here, so. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what was the other one? There Partridge was Family 22. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we took the Partridge broken Family hearted. Throw them into the future. Well, they, did, they did a lot of that. They did. Uh, they did uh, Gilligan's Island in the future. At yeah, some point. yeah, they, they did. did uh, they had. They uh, did Brady Bunch in the future yep. or something. Uh, <laughs> that was when they just started. Oh, what the heck? We don't need to put any, any original ideas. Let's just rip off some idea yeah, from yeah, when they could have been. Was a big hit. When they could have been working on Jetsons. What were exactly. they doing? Messing with the Partridge Family. Yes, exactly. Now we're calling them on that. And also doing stuff like and we mentioned this before. This this. Yogi's Gang slash Space Race splat, slash Treasure Hunt Laugh slash Olympics. Great Escape uh, slash uh, Laugh Olympics. Laugh Olympics. Pretty much all the same show. The whole concept was Hanna-Barbera said, we have thousands and thousands of characters which we only use for like one season and we're going to bring them all back because we still know the rights to them and it would be free. It would be a really cheap show. So, <laughs> and it was a really cheap show, and it was pretty bad. Well, what's All sad about were. that, too, is the kids that were brought up with that, they don't get the original characters like we had. We had the original Top Cat, original yep. McGilla Gorilla. Right. Um, what are some of the others they bring back on that? Uh, well, the laugh Quick Draw McGraw. Yeah. And Huckleberry Hound. Yeah. Huck yeah. Huckleberry Hound, my gosh. They throw him in there. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, he's Yogi here. Bear both. The they, expendable. Yeah. And, and, yeah. They're, like, they're like the um, the diplomats <laughs> yeah. of the Hanna-Barbera thing. We'll just throw them into everything mm. that we can. And, and it's just not as good. It's no, the, the characters don't have any personality. Right. Anymore. They're just really one dimensional. I mean, dimensional. what I mean, got them away from the fact. We're talking cartoons anyway, but the they fact just that really make them one dimensional. But, but there's so, there, and there were so many characters for them to handle yeah. that they couldn't really spend any time on any one character. It was like, bam, get the in, in here's this guy, and go in, here's Which these was guys. really the sad thing about the, um, well, going, jumping into the 80s again, well, the 90s, and, well, the 80s. The, um, their big. Hanna Barbera 50th anniversary thing. Yeah. They just kind of threw everybody in there just real quick. 
And then they, they, they hung around with, with Scooby-Doo, of all mm -hmm. things. Well, Scooby's <laughs> really quite popular. Well, he's quite popular, he's but he just wasn't. He's probably one of the longer running. I, I just, I don't know. The original, the original few Scooby-Doo's were probably the best ones, but and after, after that, that, they just... Well, they started they just, throwing in every celebrity you can imagine. They started throwing in all the, all the celebrity oh, look, we things. we just ran into Vincent all Price. We <laughs> ran into Sonny and Cher. Yeah, the Smothers Batman Brothers. Batman and Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan like, Winters. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, who else are they going to run into? They just happen to be there. Jerry Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> we go around the corner, there's Don Knotts. <laughs> For real. Yeah, that's everybody they could think of. It was the all-star. Uh, but, but no, what, hour. <laughs> even though the first ones, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry, Hound, all, they weren't drawn beautifully like the original Tom and Jerry's for MGM, the fact that these characters had such personality. Oh, yeah. That's what charmed us. Mm -hmm. And kids today that are watching, like my kids turned on that Laugh Olympics. Don't watch that. <laughs> they don't get any of the feeling from, they, they can identify the characters. Oh, they get, they but get, they get the they don't know the characters. In, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If that that's, even. That's, that's what they just barely, okay, I guess good catchphrases into the more popular ones. The other ones are just kind of like generic character we just had to have in that, in that spot. And characters like Snagglepuss, he just comes in and says, exit, stage left. That's it. <laughs> that's Pump, it. He's, he's just gone. gone. He's out of there. No more Snagglepuss. He is such a great guy, too. <laughs> a truly great actor of our time, time. Snagglepuss. Snagglepuss. <laughs> well, his what else acting we was his life. <laughs> Yes, it was. My goodness. Oggy Doggy, that's another one. Oggy Doggy Doggy Daddy is just tossed yeah. onto these little Hanna-Barbera junk it's shows. It's just really sad. I just wonder, you know, my wonder is, yeah, at the beginning I could understand money was tight. But come on, guys. <laughs> come on, put some money into it. I understand the Jetson movie got some money put into it, but right. that's a movie. I, I want to see good artwork on TV. And now, and now, of course, the question is whether um, uh, if the if the Jetsons movie does well, they they keep talking about this live action Flintstones movie. Yeah. I I don't want to see it. I mean, I do curiosity, curiosity. but I don't want to see that because Fred Flintstone is a great actor of our time. Yeah. <laughs> who can play his life? <laughs> well, um, who do they? Joe they, Piscopo is supposed to be. Uh, the last when they keep talking about it, they keep saying Joe Piscopo for Fred. I keep hearing John Goodman for Fred. Well, now that makes more now, sense. Now they're saying John Goodman, Goodman. since he's established himself right. and everything. But um, they, they they when they were first talking about it, they were talking about Joe Piscopo for, for Fred. But where is Joe now? Huh? Right. <laughs> he's, he does a movie. He complains about the movie. Well, we just don't talk about Joe Piscopo <laughs> yeah. anymore. Now we got. Well, I really, I don't, I, I kind of, I'd like to see a big Flintstone movie on the scale of Jetson movie. That would be nice. And uh, even if nice. they even if they want to do it and have Pebbles and Bam Bam grown up, I wouldn't mind. As long as they did it well. As long yeah. as they did it well. Get rid of these Flintstone babies. Yeah. It, it's just totally. Have Fred wake up and with realize the, it was a dream. Do something with the gazoo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they don't have to fit that in the, the great The great anymore. dream escape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a dream escape clause in my contract here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I wish the artwork would come up. And that's that's really what's hurt him is now that the whole things are all done on a computer and the and it's like well we've got uh, we've got Fred like you know like he's like this and then he's walking and he's like this okay and we'll have a computer kind of figure out all the stuff in between and and, and it really the, doesn't it really looks fake that same <laughs> that same window that's, <laughs> well that, that, same that was doorway. standard that's you know to me that's that's some of the uh, that, that's the things that made thing. those great. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> fine thing was the fact that you'd see. It, it, I mean, while because Fred those had this characters enormous... were done by actors, and they they had a personality. Yeah. They had a personality. No we need more personality in our cartoons. Hanna Barbera, listen to me. <laughs> and I think even even I mean even the laugh tracks on them are a lot. We used to be a lot better because it's like okay, we'll have a laugh where there's a line where there's a funny line rather than everything every, they say. Yeah. Blah blah, 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 It's like, no matter what they say, there's a, la there's a the huge laugh after it. Sorry, like, guys, it can't all be funny. This isn't funny. <laughs> yeah. But I think that um, <clears throat> if, if the Jetson movie does do well, and I, I do hope it does, they, they will improve because, well, when you got, um, well, I guess we'll have to mention like somebody else, um, Disney, when, when they, they just went really bad with the mm -hmm. Disney movies, um, Don Bluth went away from them and he started doing his own movies and they got increasingly better 
And so then um, from there, um, you just got the, the Roger Rabbit kind of thing, and that really yeah. threw cartoons well, forward. Let's, so we just, we got to it. end up got the show, let's there, make so. a plea. Please go back to wonderful animation. That's right. Next time on Vast Wasteland, spy, spy shows. shows. So we'll see you in two weeks. Good night, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.